Sankofa is an ancient symbol from West Africa, and it's a bird that is facing forward, looking at the future, which is what we need to do as leaders, but it's looking back. And it's saying, go back to the past, retrieve that which is useful, bring that forward, learn from the past, integrate the past into the present, and then move forward, right? So Sankofa it reaches back and says the past is a pathway to understanding the present and shaping the future. Now, that's an interesting concept because in America, we are in an uh, aura culture right now. We're, we're focused on doing and we're focused on the future. And we don't integrate our past very well, do we? We forget about the past. And yet, as leaders, to be able to integrate the past, whether it's the past of your organization or your own past or the past of our history of our country, is an important thing because if we don't learn from the past, we will repeat the mistakes of the past, right? So why don't you stand for a minute and face forward, if you have enough room. As leaders, we are facing forward, we are reaching towards the future, but we go back and we retrieve, come on, put your hands back, retrieve that which is useful, bring forward that which is meaningful, integrate the past with the present, we bring it and then we move forward, right? So that's, it's sort of a dance and you move forward. And that is called Sankofa. That's my past, that's who I really am. You can read my, my resume, right, and see the things I've done. But the reason I have done those and the reason you have done what you have done is because of the people that came before you. The people who one day had a vision that you would be doing what you're doing, just like as my parents had a vision that I would become who I am and that I would be standing here with you someday. My parents were born in Nicaragua, as was I. And that's a picture of my mother and six of her children. As we got on a boat in Puerto Cabezas, Nicaragua, to cross the Gulf of Mexico and to land in Tampa, Florida. Now, I do a lot of work with leaders in reflecting on your past and bringing that which is meaningful and useful and integrating you. And that's what authentic leadership is, by the way is knowing your story and knowing you know, why you are, who you are, what those values are, whose shoulders do you stand on. And so here's my mother, fifth grade education, comes to this country, my mother and father, with this vision for their children. And they were willing to give up their homeland, they were willing to give up their families, their friends, and the respect that they had. You have to understand that when immigrants come here, they're not respected. They're almost treated as if they're invisible. And so my mother got a, a job scrubbing floors and serving food in the school lunchroom in a Catholic school so that I could get a good education, right? And she was willing to sacrifice this. Now, when I was growing up, I was called culturally deprived. Correct? I was, I was uh, poor. I was, well, Latinos aren't short, by the way. We're just, uh, we're the right size, but we're not tall. <laughs> I thought, I used to think I was short. No, I know. Um, I was dark. I was a girl. I mean, growing up in the 50s, those of you who remember this, and by the way, we will all be there someday. So. <laughs> and um, my mother had broken English, you know, so I was embarrassed about who I was. And yet when I look at it today, I see that my parents were the greatest leaders I ever could have dreamed of having. That vision, that stamina, that belief, that ability to serve their children without thought of, 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 of themselves, right? The other thing about my parents' lives and those who have come before us is they could do what they could do. I can do anything. My life is so much easier than that of my parents, right? But if they could come here and do what they did in order for all of their children to be successful, then I can do anything. I mean, think about it. When you think about the trials and tribulations of those that came before us, the women who forged the West, girls, they couldn't even take a shower, you know? And they did all of these things so that we could have this future. 
And so when I think about it, when I reflect on my past, I see an incredible, authentic leader there in my mother and in my father, servant leaders, leaders who were able to, to grow and develop their family. Right? And my mother, by the way, when she died, and I, I won't tell you the whole story because we don't have time, she left her children what is equivalent today of $700,000 because she started a small nursery business and she took care of children at home. Then she bought a small apartment building. But the thing is, she never spent the money. And my daughter Paloma, who graduated from college last year, she had left money for her to go to college. I mean, think of that vision. 20 years from now, I will have a granddaughter. My daughter was three months old when my mother died, and I will leave money for her to get an education. And yet now we see bumper stickers, spend your retirement or spend your, you know, before your kids have it. And yet the people that came before us, they didn't think that way. All right, so now we're going to have you do a little work about your own future, I mean about your own past. And I want you to find someone in the room that you don't know, because I know you, people always sit next to their best friends. It's, a, it's like a natural. And what we're going to do is just take a few minutes for each one of you to share a little bit about your story. And I'm only doing this so that you will begin to see the power in your ancestry. Half the world, half the world venerates the people that come before them. And I want you to talk about who you are and how your family got here. And then just name two or three characteristics or family traits or gifts that you have that come from your own past and your own antipasados. You know, as a Latina, I'm lucky because at Dia de los Muertos, we put out the pictures of those that came before us and we thank them and we put out flowers and we remember. And so do African Americans and so do American Indians. And first of all, continue to do this. All the leadership programs that I start, we start by bringing the oldest picture of our family. And we build this kind of community uh, altar. And you see, before we were really mobile, a long time ago, you would have known each other's grandparents. We would have known these things about each other. And so when you're trying to build community, that idea of where did you come from, what are your roots, what are your values, that'll really tell you where, where your people come from and what's important to them. And when we do this, it is such an incredible, it takes a little bit of time, and we're going to talk about that, but it, 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 it really gives you uh, the roots and the focus that you need to move forward, and people really know each other at that point.